Well, the Speaker is the ultimate arbiter of the Commons rules, and there's certainly decisions that John Burko has made that have been quite unprecedented and relatively innovative. So, for example, we've seen him allow emergency debates on substantive motions. We've let him, we've seen him put business motions that are usually thought to be unamendable, and suddenly he's allowed amendments. All of these sorts of things. Those are unprecedented decisions, but it is within the Speaker's discretion to make them. I so, Speaker, is it's actually open to a Speaker to invent a new rule? There is always going to be an amount of discretion. It's guided by the standing orders, those are the printed Commons rules, by the precedents set out in Erskine May, that big bible of Commons procedure. We read it every bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> but it, so there is guidance, but there will always be a slight element of discretion within that system. So now that he's made changes for the first time, can another Speaker adopt them as well? That's really the big question, I think, for the next speaker, is there is now some uncertainty about how some of these specific procedures work. The precedent that we've seen in recent months doesn't necessarily match what's actually set out in the Commons rules. So it really will be up to the speaker to try and clarify how they view these procedures. And we've also seen all sorts of talk during this campaign about actually whether there is a need for a much bigger rethink of the Speaker's approach to the Commons procedures. And I know you've got some thoughts on that and I'll come back to those later. But when he was creative, as I might put it, he just borrowed a rule and um, refined it. It's his interpretation and I think John Burko has always been very clear in the decade that he's been Speaker that he viewed his role as championing the rights of Parliament and championing mm. the rights of backbenchers and I think his argument would be that that is the framework that has guided him in the interpretation of those Commons rules. Others, of course, would disagree. Throughout history, has there been a history of tussle between the House of Commons and the government, the executive, as they call it? Is, is there always been this tussle? Well, really, since sort of late uh, 19th century, what we've seen is a bit of a shift. So you, you get um, a move towards actually the government being seen as the prime legislator and therefore this assumption that actually the government should control most of the business that goes on in the Commons. Actually, in about the last 10, 20 years, there's been a bit of a different direction where people have actually begun to ask, has that gone a bit too far? Should backbenchers, should Parliament have a little bit more of a say over its own agenda? There's been some fitful attempts at reform, but nothing quite big. And then some of the tussles that we've seen in the last few months between MPs wanting to take control of the order paper, the government not wanting them to do it, really speaks to that much bigger issue. 